States are pulling back their pension contributions. Uh, this is this is worrisome. I'm not going to lie to you. This is uh, this does bother me to some degree, especially for those in the teachers uh, who are relying on the police uh, uh, unions and police officers who are relying on these pensions. Um, I don't think you'll be impacted. I, I think they'll make they'll make pro- good on their promises. It's going to be the new folks coming in, uh, and actually the folks that. Uh, it's just going to be the younger people coming in who are going to be affected uh, drastically. Um, Eric Weinstein, uh, Weinstein, Weinstein talks about this a lot in his podcast about how the university system is top heavy. Uh, essentially, there are no young people as a president. Most of the professors are older, not making way for younger folks coming in. Um, I think the same is happening in uh, in a lot of public service positions. You know, if you look at even places like the IRS, you look at places that have just a top-heavy workforce, and they're getting you know max max amount of pensions, max amount of health care provided. This stuff is not sustainable. It's just not. And uh, the younger folks are paying for it. The, the baby busters, me, our generation, are paying for the baby boomers' uh, lucrative retirements. There's no other way around that. And that might or may not bother you that I said that. It's, it's literally the reality of the, as as it is, though. Um, you unsubscribe, I guess, but this is going to be, have to be dealt with. And I think how it's going to be dealt with is going to be in the backs of the younger folks. And when I say the backs of the young folks, I don't necessarily mean that they're going to, uh, steal your money, uh, raise your taxes. I think what they're going to do is they're going to not offer as many benefits as what you've come to expect. If you go through a, uh, a government employment or something like that. And, and frankly, that's gotta be the way it's got to be. Um, I talk to government employees all the time, and uh, look, this is not to discount their work. It's not. I, I, if you say if you think I'm doing that, you're absolutely wrong. Uh, but their level of benefits that they get relative to the private workforce is just astronomical. It is. And please don't YouTube comment saying, "Oh, those government workers." I, I don't want to hear that. Many, many government workers are actually quite conservative. And believe it or not, I'm telling you. Many government employees are actually quite conservative. I'm just telling you right now. So don't be bashed at government workers that they got to, they got too much. No, they did what they were supposed to do under the law as it was. However, that law has just gone so fast and forward in terms of the benefits relative to the private sector. There's no way to keep that up. And so the younger population that's going into or currently in these lines of work, you know, police officers, teachers, you know, just government employees, state, federal, municipalities, that they're going to have to deal with uh, the less of the benefits going forward, which means paying off debt is a critical thing. I'm just telling you, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, paying off debt is the one thing you can do to make sure that you are prepared for retirement because if, if you're relying on these pensions and they're not funded to what you had thought, you're going to be world hurt, man. So let's read this a little bit. It's a quick article from uh, Advisor. I guess it comes from uh, Bloomberg, if memory. Yeah, Bloomberg. But uh, Advisor Perspectives is where I got it. Uh, Martin Braun, Dateline 8-3-2020. Uh, Colorado and South Carolina have pulled back from making additional payments to their underfunded pensions. Uh, moves that may play out in other states that are struggling to balance budgets as the commie virus ra- ravages tax revenue. Colorado eliminated a $225 million supplemental payment to the state's PERS program, the Public Employees Retirement System, backing away from the 2018 plan to bolster the pension, which is about 60% funded after suffering from years of inadequate government contributions. Uh, South Carolina suspended a, statu- a statutorily scheduled 1% employer contribution uh, increase for the fiscal year beginning July 1. Is that statutorial? That stat- stat- it's a statute. That's why law, right? You got law is a statute. Isn't that right? You can't, I, I think, it would correct me if you're in a legal beagle, but if it's statutorily, I think that's law. So how do you go back from that? If it's been already said you have to do it, I don't know. New Jersey, which has one of the most underfunded pensions, has deferred a $950 million pension payment until September. And Governor Phil Murphy's plan to increase contributions to 13% to $4.6 billion is in question. It's not a question. It ain't going to happen, man. So they're deferring a $950 million payment until September, on top of that, there's going to increase contributions to $4.6 billion. That, That's how we got the government unions to uh, to support them, by saying, we're going to do anything we can. We'll make sure your union the pensions are funded. There ain't no money there, Murphy. And by your massive amounts of lockdown and mandatory masks, there ain't no money. And then people I know in New Jersey, someone near and dear to my heart, just had her property taxes raised double. I know that's not Phil Murphy. But the county's got no money. The municipality's got own money because you're not letting businesses go to work and all these people are being laid off and shut down, fool. 
Oh, it drives me crazy. So you don't have any money. The county's got no money. They're going to raise property taxes because they need to raise revenue somehow on top of the jobs being lost, on top of people I can't afford as it is. Uh, it just, it's this, you're, you're circling the drain. You got to get out of New Jersey, man. It's doomed. It's doomed. There's no other way around that. Uh, there's definitely going to be some pressure in, in some places to not pay the annual required contributions, says uh, some guy from a cons uh, consulting firm. States are going to have to make up the short haul, shortfall somehow, some way. States are projected to face budget shortfalls of about $555 billion, with a B, through 2022, according to Center for Budget and Policy Priorities. Ugh. I can't believe, yep, they don't say Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, a big lip firm. Let's take a look at who these guys are. Why would they not say that? All right, so here's the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities uh, website. Let's go to their board and see who's on here. We'll see what kind of lefties are on. Uh, let's see. I don't know any. Uh, this guy right here, the old Center the Treasury Secretary under Obama, a big lip. Jane Hartley, didn't she used to be a, no, there's a Jane Harmon, used to be a Congress lady from, uh, um from california I remember her let's see who else we got uh i don't know any of these people uh georgetown day school all right so rich uh jacob lou the facts he's on here i don't know who henry aaron is that is brookings institute big libs but i know of uh, that doesn't look like hank aaron though uh all right so all these guys so he's got uh policy of uh, public policy so a lot of uh soft sciences for sure who else we got? Yeah, I don't know any of these other people. Oh, but here we go. Georgetown University Institute for Women, Peace, and Security. Yeah, I'm sure that's a uh, Rockefeller Foundation, former director. Yeah, there she goes. She worked for the Rockefeller Foundation, which means she is a big lip. Uh, I don't know who Robert Reichheiser is. I, uh, I know I'm familiar with him. Actually, I'm not... Uh, I'm not negative on it. He's a big lib, but I'm not negative. Oh, look, uh, Marin Wright Elderman, that's uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, favorite person right there. So big libs, man, big libs. Um, Children's Defense Fund. Uh, Obama right here. So uh, I, I don't know why these guys don't cite that CBPP uh, is liberal. If I guarantee they had the Heritage Foundation, they would say they're conservative Heritage Foundation. Uh, let's see. Uh, without, see, here we go. Uh, CP. As a Center for Budget and Policy Priority says, without more aid from Washington, they'll have to cut spending or raise taxes. Well, where does the Washington get their money from? Washington has a printing press. The states don't, which is why I'm not in favor of a wealth tax in the individual states, by the way. But I am in favor of one on the, on the federal government, for sure. Um, but you can't print money in states. You can raise taxes, and you're going to drive people out. Postponing pension payments may ease budget pain in the short run, but it'll defer the cost to later years and allow the unfunded liabilities to grow. Uh, un uh, there's as much as $5 trillion unfunded liabilities, according to the Fed. And if you factor in the big three, unfunded to Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security, in that order, by the way, the insane amount of unfunded liabilities, Medicaid, because a bulk of that comes from the states, is ugly. The pension contribution cuts are setbacks for states that enacted reforms after the Great Recession. In 2018, Colorado passed legislation to raise employee and employer contributions and require an annual lump sum payment of $225 million to the pension. It also capped the future cost of living increases at 1.5% and raised the retirement age to 64. Uh, we got Jared Polis up there. I think he was governor back then. Big, He's actually not as big lib as I would have thought. Initially, he was pretty good on the commie virus. I was pleasantly surprised to see him. I'm not sure who the legislature is in Colorado. I'm not sure if they're run by left-wing loons or not. I don't know. Uh, but Polis was, he was actually, I don't want to say he's moderate, he's not, but he was okay. I, I've, uh, of all the craziness and half-wit, um, the crazy ones in the Northeast, uh, gruesome is pretty bad too, but gruesome seems to be, you know, breathing a little bit of reality when it comes to his recognition of climate change or, uh, solar photovoltaic and wind have not have, have let people down. So I don't like gruesome in California, but he seems to at least have some basis in reality. It's funny when you become a governor, how quickly you have to be based in reality, as opposed to being a simple Congresswoman, a simpleton Congresswoman from, uh, uh, from uh, AOC uh, or from the Bronx, like AOC. I mean, she just literally, <laughs> nothing's going on up there with that lady. It's weird. Uh, but I like her. I like the fact she's calling the Democrats out. That's good. It's going to make Trump win even bigger and more fun to watch. 
Uh, in 2017, South Carolina increased scheduled employer contribution rates by 1% annually starting in 2019 uh, until they reached slightly more than 21% by fiscal 2023. Uh, the pension in South Carolina is only 54% funded, reduced the amortization period for its $23 billion shortfall to 20 years from 30, uh, required to pay off debt faster, and reduced the in assumed rate of return to 7 and a quarter from 7.5, which is quite high. Uh, let's see, Colorado's decision to defer their scheduled by law payment uh, was a credit negative, allowing the pensions fund unliability to grow at a compounding rate of seven and a quarter. Uh, let's see, record state budget gaps could reignite efforts by officials to reduce pension benefits, raise employee contributions, and eliminate traditional pensions altogether, which is going to happen. Why do you think there's no private pensions anymore, my friends? If you look in the 1974 ERISA, the facts were because the private pensions were not funded. The same thing is with the government pensions. The pensions are going away. There is no money for that. There is no money. Just recognize that, man. And just like in 1974 under ERISA, no one offered private pensions anymore because they could not fund them correctly. They couldn't. And we had many, many, and this is where that drives me crazy. The people on the left saying, oh, we need to go back to all the pensions as if there's some panacea. Of just everyone had a pension. It's simply, it's fake. It's fake news. A lot of those pensions were badly funded. Some paid, some didn't, though. And if your pension did not pay, well, what are you going to do? You had no alternative. And that's uh, so the company, the corporations could offer you all day long. Look, I will pay this. I'll pay this. I'll pay this here. I got this pension. I got this pension. And when it came time to apply for it, like, we don't have the pension. What are you going to do? All right, so let's uh, read this, what they did in South Carolina. Uh, so South Republicans, Governor Harry McMaster wants to close the state's $32 billion uh, unfunded uh, pension plan, move all st new state workers to 401k style plans. Yep. It's weird how they talk about the Democratic governor. And uh, it's weird how they only talked about the Republican in South Carolina. They don't talk about the Democrats in uh, Jared Polis, whoever the Democratic governor was in Colorado, and they used the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities. Weird. Anyway, get used to the days of no pensions. I'm telling you right now, it's it's coming. Uh, you might have one, but you're going to be the last of a dying breed. So you're going to have to figure out how to do this on your own. I will right, we'll see you.